Yo, 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 what's up, party people? This is Sage Lewis. This is the Sage Against the Machine podcast. I couldn't figure out how to get my music to work. I took it as a sign from the universe. Who needs music? Let's just get right into this thing. We're talking local politics. Now, let me tell you a little bit about why local politics is so badass, okay? There's something called home rule. Let me see if I can find this in Ohio. All right. So um, this is something I want you to understand. All right. Uh, Municipal home rule. In Ohio, municipal corporations, cities, and villages have certain powers granted to them In article blah, blah, blah of the Ohio Constitution that exists outside authority found in the revised code, because these powers originate in the Constitution, laws passed by the General Assembly that interfere with them may be invalid as applied to municipal corporations unless those laws are sanctioned by other provisions. So um, these powers granted by the Constitution as known as home rule powers include the power of local self-government, the exercise of certain police powers, and the ownership and operation of public utilities, okay? What I want you to know about this is that there is a lot of power given to cities in Ohio. Like, for example, um, how much marijuana is legal in Cleveland? So, recreational marijuana is illegal in Ohio, but possession is not always criminal, says this little article. If you're caught in position of... um, 100 grams, about 3.5 ounces, it is considered a minor misdemeanor, and you could be fined uh, $150, okay? You need to look. So look at this, WKYC. City of Council passes legislation to decriminalize low-level marijuana pos- uh, possession. The city of Cleveland has passed an ordinance to decriminalize low-level possession of marijuana. The ordinance first proposed earlier this month was approved during Monday's council meeting. The ordinance eliminates fines and jail time for possession of up to 200 grams or seven ounces of marijuana. What does 200 grams of marijuana look like? All right, this right here is what 200 grams of marijuana looks like. That is a foot long, okay? That is a foot, a full foot of marijuana that you can just walk around with in Cleveland, Ohio. Do you... Do you get it? Do you see what I'm talking about here? Now, does Akron have anything like that? Hell no, it doesn't have anything like that. Let's see. Cities in Ohio where marijuana is legal. All right. Cannabis in Ohio, Wikipedia. All right. Decriminalization. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Um, this is okay. Uh, September, 2015 Toledo, uh, depenalized misdemeanor cannabis, no fines and no jail time for possession or cultivation. That's growing under 200 grams. That amount of uh, marijuana. Possession of hashish. I don't even know what that is. 10 grams of that. Dayton, 100 grams. Cincinnati, 100 grams. Columbus. 
you get a ten dollar fine for a, a possession of a hundred grams. Okay, and then twenty in twenty twenty Cleveland two hundred grams, and then look at all these other cities. Look at these cities. All these cities have decriminalized marijuana. Do you see Akron in here? No, you don't. Because even though they say they're Democrats, they're not really Democrats. Our mayor wanted to vote for Bloomberg, for God's sake. He endorsed Bloomberg. (laughs) What does my friend Josh Schaefer say? What's up, my brother? Hold on. Let me pop this sucker out. Let's take a look here. (coughs) Josh Schaefer. I'm the only candidate for mayor talking about decriminalization in Akron. National Organization for Marijuana Legalization says we're the only urban city not to. This is true. This is true. I don't see, I haven't heard any, I've been to two city, uh, uh, to two mayoral debates. I've never heard yet once the word racism. And the only person talking about legalizing marijuana, Josh Schaefer. Okay, now Josh Schaefer is a feisty candidate. Let's see if I can get his site for you. Joshua Schaefer. Josh, Josh gets us dot us. Now, here is Josh Schaefer's website. He is running for Akron mayor. I did not know this. All I knew was Josh Schaefer works at a cell phone store. That's all I heard. But then at this most recent debate, he gave me his, uh, he told us uh, his, like his background. So starting in 2006, Josh started a job at Business Research Services where he continued to be employed until the owner retired during the pandemic. While Josh started as a telephone surveyor, he was promoted to management. There he managed a staff as well as served as director of political and government research. Now, check this out. Josh's educational background is from the University of Akron, where he earned a a Bachelor of Science in Political Science and Criminal Justice, a minor in Psychology, a minor in Criminal Justice, and a a Certificate of Applied Politics. Okay? Uh, Josh had the university's internship with the highest-ranking official of the semester in D.C. with Senator, Senator Sherrod Brown. Josh learned the art of working with other elected officials to make things work. Today, he works at a retail store manager as a retail store manager at a, uh, a cell phone store. Okay, and now he's running for mayor. Now, before you say, "Well, we can't have a mayor that's running a cell phone store," AOC was a, no, AOC, uh, what was she? Like a server, right? She was a waitress, wasn't she? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, restaurant. Server. I believe. Ah, she was a bartender where it was smart move, smart move, smart move. There's uh, a lot of money in bartending. I was a bartender. I was a bartender. Look at that picture. Is that for real? Behind the bar at the Queensboro restaurant on May 31st to raise awareness for one fair wage campaign. Uh, Yeah. So look, this is a um, very very powerful, very prominent politician. If you're on the left, you probably love AOC. I like her. I like her. Bartender. She bartended in waitresses for years, for years after graduating college before becoming the youngest woman ever elected to Congress at the age of 29. The stuff a legend. An origin story for a superhero figure like many to become with regard to the future of the left. All right? So look, 
You got to free your mind from your bigotry. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Free your mind. What's up, Tia? Oh, yeah. So, okay. Tia says, yeah, wait. You bought, You got me. Uh, thank you, Tia. How are you, Tia? It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Um, I hate when people just disregard somebody because they don't like where they work or, you know, what they look like or anything. This is a democracy, people. And wait, people are like, somebody gave me, they're like, no, man, it's a republic. Let me tell you something. And Josh can tell me if this is true or not. I think it's true. A republic is where you elect people to represent you. A democracy is where you elect your own people. The most votes for mayor in all of Akron will become the mayor. And that will happen on May 2nd, 2023. We will not pick the mayor in November. We don't, uh, I don't know that, I don't even think there's any Republicans now on the uh, on the ballot. This one guy was going to run and he his, his signatures, he couldn't get 50 signatures. So there is no Republican on the ballot. Maybe an independent will run, but it's a real hassle. You need like 800 signatures and, and, and you're not going to win. Because there are so many people. Look, I'm knocking on thousands of doors. And I can't tell you how many people will say, what party are you? And I say, Democrat. And they say, I'll vote for you. And I'm like, really? (laughs) That's it? Because I told you I was a Democrat? You don't know anything about me. You can pick any party you want to run for. Okay? This guy, Mark Greer, who I love. Uh, is running for mayor. I'm going to talk a little bit about him. He's always voted a uh, Republican in the primaries. And he's running Democrat. Uh, oh, thank you, Josh. Josh Safer saying, don't forget early voting starts April 4th. And that means, I think, doesn't it, Josh, that you can go down to uh, the Board of Elections. Summit County... Board of Elections. So let's see. Elections, elections, elections. Here we go. Okay, here's what I know. Registration deadline. You have to, um, I think you have to be registered to vote by April 3rd. Polls open on May 2nd at 6.30 a.m. Close at 7.30 p.m. Um... See, doesn't say when early voting is on here, but I believe jo- I believe Josh Schaefer, he went to school for this stuff, man. He knows. Guy knows. Josh Schaefer says you can vote early on April 4th. You can take that. Uh, also, also, Josh Schaefer, given some solid ideas. Also, update your registration immediately if you moved. Good. That's good. Board of election or it's not too late to order a mail-in ballot. Oh, you can order a mail-in ballot. All right. See? Look, people. You've got to understand how powerful local government is. All right? Local government is... We already have cities that have decriminalized 200 milligrams of marijuana. It's a foot long. It's like a it's like a freaking subway sub of marijuana. Where'd it go? Where's the picture? Where'd it go? Oh yeah, it's right here. It's bigger than a subway sub. No way. No way. Would a Subway sub ever be that thick and juicy and delicious? It's a foot long, but way thicker. It's like a Hanini sub thick of delicious, juicy marijuana. 
200 milligrams. Just walk around Cleveland with that. Just do it. Just enjoy your life. Not an Akron. Not an Akron. City Council, if it had enough votes, could make that happen. Could make that happen. We must learn the importance of local government. Now, let me tell you another little inside information. There are 13 people on city council in Akron. If you can get seven on your side, you'll pass marijuana. You'll pass whatever you want. If you can decriminalize marijuana, what else can you decriminalize? What else can you do? All right? This is my new thought, okay, about poly- about uh, drugs. First of all, addiction is not a crime. It's a mental disorder. Look at this. The DSM are on addiction. Not the DSM, thank you. Shit. The DSM on addiction. Okay, here it is. The DSM is the book on mental illness. Since the DSM-4 was published in 1994, its approach to substance use disorders has come under scrutiny. Strengths were identified, uh, notably reliability and validity of dependence, but concerns have also written the DSM-5 substance-related disorder considered these issues and recommended revisions to the five. General concerns include whether to retain division for two disorders, dependence and abuse, whether... Okay, Uh, come on. Uh, Hold on, I just want to... This is too inside. The DSM... The new DSM describes a problematic pattern of use of an intoxicating substance leading to clinically significant impairment or distress with 10 or 11 diagnostic criteria recurring uh, in a 12-month period. Okay? It's a disorder. Okay? Now, what happens if you are blind drunk walking down the street Let's watch somebody super drunk. Video of somebody super drunk. There, drunk people falling down. (laughs) All right, when we watch this, we laugh. Look at that drunk fucker. Oh, jeez. Somebody get him. Can I have Sambuca? For Sambuca. Oh, honey. Have you got... All he wants to know... My name is Beth. Have you got any money? Beth. This is the DJ booth. See, look. Okay, don't you think this is funny? Aren't you laughing? I'm laughing because, okay, I can't even stop watching. One more, just let me watch this guy. Look at that poor guy in his sock. Okay, okay, I want more, I can't stop. Whoa, watch out, whoa, whoa. Wow, that guy recovered. That guy recovered. Watch out. He's drunk, brother. You don't need to be angry. Wow. Okay, watch that. Okay. Okay. Now, watch this. Um. Here is Streets of Philadelphia. Now, this person 
is not on alcohol. They are probably on um, some sort of opiate, I would think. Okay? Not as funny. Why is it not as funny? Doing this, this video quality is so good. Okay. There's a couple people just chilling. I mean, literally, what is that guy doing other than standing there? He's just standing there. I mean, that guy can touch the ground. None of those drunk people could have ever touched the ground. Here, let's try and get you some more. Here's some people. Okay, look at these guys over here on the left. They're taking a nap. It's called nodding out. They're so chill. But do you think it's worse? Now, the scenes are different because we're in a poor neighborhood. The background looks different, right? Look, look at the trash. Okay? What I am suggesting to you is we find this tragic because it is in a poor neighborhood and we find this crap funny because it's in a rich neighborhood. Do you understand the difference? See, this is funny because this drunk asshole is just at the beach. All of these people are rich. See, she's cute. She's cute. They're all cute. It's a bath. Okay, this guy's on a train. This guy's in a wedding. This guy, I don't know where he is, but he's dressed nicely. He's just out for a fun night. That guy just goes on and on. I don't know how he recovers. That guy is amazing. That guy has some serious ability to maintain balance. Watch out. Wow. Wow. Oh, he couldn't keep it all the way. Oh, man. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm getting at? Can you understand that we find drunkenness, which honestly was worse than what we saw on the streets of Philadelphia with the opiate people, but because the opiate people were in a poor neighborhood and looked poor, it's gross. Do you understand? You gotta understand this, okay? Josh Safer says, if we treat substance abuse disorder as a mental illness and stop locking up the mentally ill, we can stop complaining about the jails and criminal justice system being full and focused on crime. This just in, Josh Schaefer happens to know something about this because he earned a BS in political science and criminal justice. This guy isn't talking out his ass like me. I'm just an English major, okay? Do you understand? This guy knows a thing or two about this stuff. Josh Schaefer says no other candidate for mayor is talking about definite uh, about definitely drug law enforcement and using that money uh, for mental health care. Health care, not jail. This is the common sense approach. Everything points to this. Why do we find alcoholics stumbling around funny, but opiate users nodding out disgusting? We got to ask ourselves those questions. We got to ask ourselves those questions. Because if we don't acknowledge our um, bigotry based on class, we won't be able to get past this. Now, look, I'm... When I talk about you being racist, I talk about you being classist, I talk about you being misogynistic, I should say we. When I talk about us being racist, when I talk about us being classist, when I talk about us being misogynistic, and women can be misogynistic too. Don't, I'm not, we all are capable. 
Just because you were ma- you got you were born with this with certain parts doesn't make you less potential to be racist, cap, uh, 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 um, misogynistic, or classist. Okay, all right. Josh has got to go watch NPR. All right. Well, learn more, Josh. Learn more. It's good to see you, buddy. All right. Oh, you have an NPR. Oh, my God. He has an interview with NPR. I'm sorry. Excellent. Go for it, brother. Go for it. Good, good, good. Um, All right. So, look. We have. It's okay. To be racist, misogynistic, and um, uh, uh, classist. It's not okay to do nothing about it. Okay? When you're laughing at a falling down drunk, but you're looking at somebody nodding out on opiates on a poor street corner, you have to ask yourself, what's the difference? And what you're going to say is, you're going to say, well, that's tragic. And then maybe you'll say, well, now that I think about it, the drunk people are tragic too. Okay. But what do you feel inside? Are you still laughing at the drunks and still grossed out by the poor opiate users? I need you to get into your heart. Okay. I need you to get in there and think about, allow yourself to feel and and what, uh, to think about what you really feel. Okay. It is okay to say to feel, let me say it this way. It is okay to feel like women should be barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen. If that's what you feel. Okay. You need to be able to say that if you feel it. Because if you don't say it, then we never get to deal with it. But let's just take that one. Let's take the idea. I was just, I just saw something come over on Parlor. A woman was writing about how the women's movement was the worst thing ever to happen to women. Uh, She wants to be married young, have babies, and not work anymore. That's cool. That is cool she wants that. But wouldn't she like the option? And in her defense, maybe she's saying, well, look, now I don't have the option because now we live in a world where we have to have two incomes. And um, I can't afford to live in America now um, without both my husband and me working. And so now I can't be a stay-at-home mom. And there's there's some real uh, things to flush out there. Like, did we resettle uh, income so that we're requiring two people to work? Because it was not that way. My mom was a stay-at-home mom until my le- my dad left me. It's uh, left us when I was seven. She thought she was going to be a stay-at-home mom the whole time. Because one income could uh, support a household. That was early seventies. Most people, that's not possible. And then other people are buying too much of a house, buying too fancy of cars. You know, I mean, you have to acknowledge that, you know, did you really need that $350,000 house? I mean, I don't know, maybe not, but now both of you are going to work. So, but let's say, let's just go back to that women. Let's take the premise Women should be barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen, okay? Why? Well, that's just the way it is, okay? Why? It's fine, just why? Well, because then that's how a stable home is made, that there's somebody at home that cares for the kids and women care for the kids, Uh, I'm going to come back to that one, Josh. I just want to finish this thought because otherwise I'm so easily distracted. It's good thought. I'll come back. Um, the, okay. That does sound good. That maybe there should be somebody at home to take care of the kids. And may I say, 
As a uh, guy who has raised a kid basically in a two-income household, there have been times where it's very difficult. You Not only do you, um, you know, you're, you're working full-time. Both people are working full-time. You have to cook and clean. You have to take care of the kids. You have to pay the bills, blah, blah, blah. And the woman oftentimes still gets stuck with it. How many two-income uh, two households still make the woman do most of the work at home? I think a lot. I think it's a lot. So couldn't a woman say, well, yeah, screw that. Why do I want two jobs? That guy, that fucker's only got one job. So now we're having a decent conversation. But what I would like to suggest, in my 51 years of observing people, is that I have not seen a clear delineation where people with vaginas are better than people with penises. Because that's all we're talking about here. Penises and vaginas. You're saying because that kid comes out of that vagina, that human being is automatically a better parent and a better housekeeper. I have not seen that done. I have not seen that in my experience observing people. I have seen some shitty moms, like shitty, like a lot of shitty moms. They play head games against their kids. They're mentally abusive. Sometimes they're physically abusive. They're screwed up. They, they like cling on to like some sort of like midway through their, their life. They become obsessed with some sort of psycho crazy religion. They just become bananas. Not because they're women. They just become bananas because they're human beings on planet Earth. I'm not saying that women have a propensity for being more insane. Not at all. I think sometimes, if anything, maybe women talk about it a little bit more than men. I think I've seen a study about that. I think I just saw a study where men uh, don't go to doctors as often as women because, you know, we, we got this whole thing where we don't like being vulnerable. But to say that a vagina is universally better at parenting than a penis, because that's all we're saying, because we're using these traditional stereotypes of what a man is and a woman is, that is a total lie. No, I don't hate women. What are you talking about? Stephanie Evans says, I, you really hate women, don't you? No. I. What are you saying? No. What I'm saying is that... The idea that women, because they have a vagina, should be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen does not in any way correlate to the fact that they are better at housekeeping or better at being parents. I've never, I can't see it. Look, I'm telling you, people, I have not seen any case of anyone like here, you want to hear a racist thing that oftentimes black people, they like fried chicken, watermelon, and menthol cigarettes. Okay. There's the most racist thing you're going to hear all day. I've done a study. I've gone around. I can't find it. I ask everybody, not everybody, because unless, I, you know, I don't want to shock some people, but like my homeless friends, I've asked all my homeless friends. I'm here to tell you. Menthol cigarettes are smoked across the board by different people. Um, uh, 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 black people smoke um, reds, which are what you call full flavor, non-menthol, at a, the same rate as menthol, just at the same rate as white people. And white people and black people hate or like watermelon and fried chicken the same. I think sometimes maybe people from the South like a nice greasy fried 
uh, chicken. Not black people. Maybe southern people, but even then I can't really find it. <laughs> I can't find it. I like fried chicken and watermelon. Okay? That doesn't make me black. It doesn't make me anything other than a guy that likes fried chicken and watermelon. That's it. I'm telling you, I cannot find any stereotypes. I can't make racism, classism, or misogyny work no matter how hard I try looking for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, I guess we can say women give birth. We can't deny that one. Babies come out of vaginas. That's true. So we have to acknowledge that. Semen comes out of penises. Pretty sure those are accurate statements. I'm not a doctor, but I think that's right. Okay? That's where it ends. That's where it ends. Who should, should anyone stay at home with the kid? Maybe, maybe they shouldn't. Depends on their family shit system. Should the mom stay at home? Should the dad stay at home? I don't know. It's a personal decision. Every family unit is different. I've seen stay-at-home dads. They're great. I've seen gay men, uh, married gay men, um, adopt babies. They look like they're doing great. They look like they're doing... I've seen lesbian women adopt babies. They look like they're doing great. The only thing I've ever seen about good homekeeping, housekeeping, and hey, you want another one? Another uh, 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 bigoted statement? Gay people are tidy. Uh, some big gay people are tidy. Some are total pigs. Total slobs. Seen it. Seen it. Overweight and dirty and disgusting. Just like any other human being. I'm telling you, I cannot find any indication that race or class or gender predispose you to anything, anything. Martin Luther King says you have to judge a person by the contact, content of their character, not by the color of their skin. That's it. You got to look at the person. Is that person a good parent? Yes or no. You can't just be like, well, because they got a vagina, of course they're going to be a good parent. No. And no, I don't hate women. Let me tell you something about that statement, Stephanie. Um, I will be an activist um, for... Uh, the black community, the homeless community, the gay community, the poor community. But I'll pick up a gun for women. All right? You understand what I'm saying? Women's rights are... Those are the things that get me going the most. I'd go to war for women's rights. Do you know that, uh, okay, when could women own property in America? When could women own property in the United States? Uh, Let's see. When could a woman buy a house? 1970s. All right. Although women had varying degrees of property rights and financial freedoms throughout history, it was technically legal for banks to refuse loans and credit to unmarried women or require a husband's permission for married applicants until the Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 19... I was alive! When could women in the United States get a credit card? 1974. 1974. 
According to Bankrate, in 1974, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act prohibited discrimination against credit applicants based on gender, among other factors. For the uh, first time, women could own a credit card in their own name. Can you believe this fuckery? Do you know these things? Do you know that what's it been 50 years since a woman can buy a house without a man's permission or get a credit card? Do you know how easily that could slip back? I'm not having it. I'm fucking not having it. I have seen no indication at all that women can't handle owning a house or a credit card. None. And may I say, if anything, a lot of times, women step up a lot more than men. I'm not saying it's because they're women. I'm just saying they, they don't fuck around. What percentage of farms in Iowa are owned by women? Studies from Iowa State University have said women own or partially own at least 51% of Iowa's farmland. Half of the farms in Iowa, which is where we get all our corn. It is, I don't know if you've ever driven through Iowa. It's amazing. It's amazing. That shit is being run by women who in 1971 couldn't own a house or get a credit card. <laughs> I will go to war for women's rights. Make no mistake about it. I'll do this like I'm running for city council. I'll put tents in my yard for, for everybody else. But uh, I am i don't fuck around with women's rights. I do not fuck around with that shit. It pisses me off. It's half of the population. It's half of the population. So, yeah, uh, if you think I hate women, you don't understand me. What I'm doing here is I'm talking about subjects that are painful. All right? All right. Uh, this was not going where I wanted it to go, but I do want to talk a little bit about politics. All right? I want to talk a little bit about um, the candidates for mayor. Okay? Um. We have seven candidates right now, okay? We have seven candidates. These are our candidates. Tara Mosley, Marco Somerville, Shamus Malik, Jeff Wilhite, Keith Mills, Joshua Schaefer, and Mark Greer, all right? These are the guys. <coughs> I am going to go down... The list just from top to bottom. Tara Mosley is my favorite. I like Tara Mosley. Tara Mosley uh, supported our camps. Uh, she voted in favor of the um, uh, our tent village. Uh, Russ Neal did as well. Those are the only two people left on city council that voted in favor of that. We had four votes, uh, but only two are left. Okay, everybody else voted against uh, sheltering homeless people. Okay. Uh, she's smart. She is, she has, uh, she's a three-term Akron city council person. She has put out really great legislation. Uh, I, um, I love her. I love Tara Mosley, Tara Mosley for mayor. That's who I vote for. Marco Somerville. If I had to bet, I would say he's going to win. Okay. Marco Somerville has a ton of, of experience. He was a uh, city council president, planning director. Right now he's um, the deputy mayor for intergovernmental affairs. He's a business owner. Um, he was the N, uh, the Akron NAACP president. R a great amount of um, uh, experience. Uh, he's getting a ton of money poured into his campaign by big donors. And that worries me. Uh, he believes that the, um, he believes that the, um, names of the police officer that killed Jalen Walker should be, uh, 
announced. I really like that. Um, I think he's a development guy. I think he was for the White Pond development, which uh, is a total debacle. Uh, I want a black mayor. You get either of these two people in, I'm not going to be unhappy. Tara gets in, ridiculously happy. Marco Somerville, I'm like, oh, please, I hope you're good. I hope you're good. I hope you're good. I hope you're good. That's just all. You just don't know until he gets in there. Shamas Malik. At one point, I endorsed Shamas Malik. Uh, that was before Tara Mosley ran. Shamas Malik has just serially been uh, annoying me. Okay? Now, here is Shamus Malik taking time. Uh, but I, but I also Hold on. Want to say one other thing. Okay, wait. So if you think I've just okay. Been trying to say now, okay. I I spoke at this uh this meeting, and uh, he is now going to be talking about my podcast. Other things. This part maybe not. Um, there's one of the folks who, who came up to, to speak as very charismatic. Okay. First of all, he sets this up. Now, keep in mind, this guy is running for mayor. And he says this might not be popular. So he knows that this is a controversial statement. Very charismatic. I don't, I think. Okay, this is me talking. That's, you know, the backhandedness. Very charismatic. Very charismatic. Like one of those guys you you think you should like, but you really shouldn't. Uh, but recorded a video podcast this week. Yes. Here we go. Uh, where the title is, yeah. All Politicians Are Slime Cancer. That's me! <laughs> okay. He stands up at city council to bash the name of my podcast. Jalen Walker has been murdered. The White Pond thing is a debacle. And he needs to talk about my title of my podcast. Akron City Council member Shamas Malik giving me a shout out at the Akron City Council meeting at eight. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know, but there is a thing called trolling. And I was not thinking that he would be this stupid to do this, but he fell for it. When the, it's basic, like, it's basic, um, 101 podcasting blogging. You poke somebody and you wait for them to respond. And he did it on city council. 30 p.m. on November 14th. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um, I got snap. You're not allowed to clap, but I did get some snaps for that title. I was in the room. I was that very charismatic guy. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, you know, we're not superheroes. And not now he goes on to complain about how hard his job is. Not superheroes, but you are the elite that run the government. We're not special. We don't have... You're not special? You vote on everything, Shamus Malik. Special powers? Uh, you have a lot of special powers. You decide what kind of... For example, the reason there were... The room was packed with... Uh, people from the community because we, they were begging you not to put in this bloated, stupid, high priced. All right. So do you get the idea? The guy is an idiot. All right. And I Junkie. will say this. Some of the stupidest people I've ever met are people with high degrees, like big degrees, doctors and just you know, he's a lawyer. He's got his law degree from Harvard. What an idiot. He is in a room. You can't see us. It's packed with activists. And he bashes an activist. What a moron. Oh, it's just political idiocy. But I'll take it. I thought it was hilarious. He likes to punch down. I make a point of never punching down. I try not to punch down. Sometimes I get pulled into it, but I really, really try not to. He's punching down. He's in the authority. I'm just a guy. I was a stupid podcast that nobody listens to. 
and he's punching down at me. What an asshole. But I'll take it because I got a shout out at city council. Good, good. Now, but that's not why I now am 100% against Shamus Malik. This is why. Stood up at that podium and, and asked Mr. Fusco to meet him in a dark alley. I'm going to show you what uh, I'm going to show you what Reverend Ray Green said, but uh, this he's talking about Reverend Ray Green, an amazing human. We are so lucky to have Reverend Ray Green here in Akron. He has done so much. He really was instrumental in issue 10. He's an activist. He's amazing. He's a black man trying to do right. Just a normal black man. And this guy with this fucking tie up here on this 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 snake pit of evil is bashing him. So, 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 so far past inappropriate. So far past inappropriate. So far past inappropriate. So far gone. So, so far gone. So far gone. I mean, can you imagine? Could you imagine somebody saying that? Do you remember? Did you take? God damn it. And that's where I start just getting furious as I think about it during the podcast. I just get madder and madder. I want you to hear what Reverend Ray Green said, okay? Good afternoon. Good evening. Ray Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. Turn the mic on. It's on. That's good. Can you hear me? Uh, 455 West Thornton, Akron, Ohio. Um, I, I want to address two things. This man is a hero. Things today. Um, real. Now look, can you see, look, here's all these young black men wanting to listen to Ray Green, okay? Young black men looking for somebody who is a leader, who somebody can, uh, they can look up to, that is a positive influence in the community. Real quick, the first thing is, um, I, I didn't hear it today, but normally I hear, uh, particularly from the president, um, a manner in which we are supposed to address council. Um, I am shocked and dismayed and utterly upset and disgusted by the way a member of city council addressed the public today. He was talking about Jeff Fusco and how he, he just belittled and, 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 and was just unprofessional and mean to average citizens. He's a dick. Jeff Fusco is a dick. Um, that was just totally disrespectful and against what you require from us. They do that all the time. Do you notice how uh, uh, Shamus Malik was able to bash us? We couldn't do that to Shamus Malik. We'd get, we'd get gaveled. And to see that that person has not been censored or anything else um, is a grave injustice to the person on this body that has been censored. Um, they censored um, a Russ Neal for something that was never actually confirmed that he did. He apparently uh, scared six anonymous women over Zoom, uh, and he's been censored for it. And at any given time, you can see me in the dark alley, just me and you and repeat those same things. The second thing I want to... Okay, so what he's saying is you wouldn't say those things to my face out on the street. All right? He's not throwing down. And may I say, we come from a country of dueling. Literally, Aaron Burr, we have dueled in this country. He's not talking about, let's do a duel, sir. He's saying, what he is saying is, you stand over here protected by all your walls and all your police, and you feel free to say really dirty shit to us, but you wouldn't say that shit on the street. That's all he's saying. Addresses this legislation. And then he goes on to talk about the legislation, and then that's when... Shamus Malik is so outraged. And that's when I say, fuck you, Shamus Malik. I get so fucking tired of your f 
fucking bullshit. Emo Kai Okolo is there is an empty seat right now on the um, police oversight board because five black, five white men uniformly in a block voted against Emo Kai Okolo, an attorney from Jones Day, because he called the police one time, I think, on, on, on Facebook, in a Facebook comment, pigs. And they're like, well, we can't have that. The police oversight board is a nothing board. It has no power, nothing. And they will not wa- allow one young black man on it. Fuck you, you fucking white fuckers. Fuck you and fuck you, Shamas Malik, for having the audacity to call out Reverend Ray Green. You shut the fuck up, you elitist, snobby, pricking fucking asshole. God damn it. You see how mad this makes me? That dog has to leave now. It pisses me the fuck off. How off, how long do black men have to keep their head down and, and ask, yes, Massa, please, Massa. I'm sorry, Massa. How long? When is a black man allowed to stand up and say, you have treated us like shit for four centuries? No, no, no. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Fuck you, motherfucker. I said I'd want to meet him in the back alley, not to beat him up and talk to him, have him have the, 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 the balls to talk to me one-on-one, and you think I'm going to fucking burn this place down. Meanwhile, my ancestors have been sold uh, for the highest bidder and abused and raped and murdered and pillaged, and you have nothing to say about that, Shamas fucking Malik. God damn it. I hope you fucking never get another goddamn position in politics ever again. I'm sick of you. You are a bigoted, condescending, elitist snob that does not deserve the position of being in city council, much less being mayor. It freaking pisses me off to no end. Fuck you, Shamus Malik. See, makes me really mad. Really fucking mad. (sighs) Ah. That was it. He burned it, man. He is a dick. He is a total fucking arrogant dick. He has chastised anybody who dares to stand up and say anything. All we're allowed to say to Shamus Malik, according to Shamus Malik, is we're frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated of 400 years of oppression and uh, betrayal by my own country. I'm frustrated, Shamus. Is that okay? I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. Am I not saying it too loud, Shamus? I'm trying to say it really nicely. I'm I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. God damn it. Fuck you, Shamus. Go back to the East Coast with your elitist, snobby fuckers. We don't want you here anymore. Fuck you for ever saying anything against Reverend Ray Green. That man is a fucking... A uh, 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 symbol of hope and 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 black power and and all that is good with the world, and you are nothing but an elitist snobby prick. Fuck you, God damn it! I can't say it enough. Yeah, Amy says, yeah, that was real sage. Yeah, I look. I'm sorry. I you love it. I thank you. You're I. I'm not going to allow bigots because that's what he is. And Shamus isn't necessarily a bigot about race. I don't know if he is or not, but he is a classist bigot. Absolutely. He feels better than all of us. And anything that we do that is like, like beneath his sensibilities, he shames us. He shamed me on it at city council for the name of a, podcast what the fuck is that what the fuck is that shamus what kind of mayor are you gonna be you're gonna be butthurt about everything that somebody says about you you're just gonna walk around being like don't say that don't say that don't say that don't say that that's gonna be you're the mayorship because that's all you ever talk about is berating the people you don't like the people You think we are beneath you. You think we are scum. And you are better than us. It is as clear as day. That's how you feel. And I'm over it. 
I'm telling you, I thought he was one of the good ones too, but this pissed me off. He does not like the people. He does not like us. He does not respect us. He does not think that we are worthy of, 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 of our emotions and our feelings that we don't understand, that we don't, we don't get it, and that he's going to be some sort of intellectual elitist God to descend from Boston on back into as, as, as the prodigal son to save us from our wicked, evil selves. I'm done with him. I'm so fucking done with him. God damn it. It's the Reverend Gray Green thing. I, I just think he was a moron for calling out my thing, but I'll, t- I'll take it every time, every day of the week. I'll take it every day of the week. He wants to like chastise the title of my blog post. That's just, a, that's just, that's just advertising and shows what a moron he is. But when you fuck with my Reverend Ray Green, you fuck with, you have, you have, you have crossed a motherfucking line, you fucking asshole. God, I hope you, I hope you fucking crash and burn and you got to go to therapy for not understanding why you don't uh, 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 win this election. That you think, you think you're going to win. He told me he's not worried. He said, I'm not worried. Ha! You're not worried, motherfucker? You're not worried? Ah! 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 You are not winning. No. The racists are not going to vote for a Muslim. The black people are not going to vote because you dissed Ray Green, a, a, a hero of Akron. You are condescending. You'll get some votes in Ward 8. I don't even think you're going to win Ward 8. I think uh, I think that actually um, Marco Somerville will win Ward 8. He'll take Ward 8. Ward 8 is all you ever had. That was the best shot you have. You're going to lose Ward 8, and you're done. And then I want you to crawl away quietly back to the East Coast with your, with your fucking asshole uh, 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 elitist snobby friends and go get a therapist and talk about what a shithole Akron is because you're better than us. Sick of it. Sick of it. All right. And that's what I think. Jeff Wilhite, a lot of experience. Uh, we don't need another white guy. Just no. He's milk toast. I can't remember a thing Jeff Wilhite ever says. He's not catchy. He's not. No. Sorry, Jeffy. You seem like a nice guy. Just no. Just go away. Go away. Keith Mills. Love Keith Mills. He is a um, teacher in Cleveland. He teaches, um, he also is an e-coach, an e-sports coach up in Cleveland. Uh, has some amazing lived experiences uh, with police. He's had a, uh, an intruder in his house. Has some wonderful thoughts. I want him to be on school board. School board, Keith Mills. Josh Schaefer, uh, the more I listen to Josh Schaefer, the more I like him. Uh, he's got to keep going. I think he should run for city council or school board himself next. Climb up the ladder, man. Get us, let us get to know you. Mark Greer. He has now moved into my third spot. Okay. He has moved into my third spot of, uh, uh, what do I do here? Hold on. Um, now the order is for me, Mark, uh, it goes, it goes um, Tara Mosley, Marco Summer, Mar- Mark Greer. There is a there is a uh, debate tonight. Here's the debate schedule: three sixteen Social Justice Forum hosted by the NAACP League of Women Voters, Akron Interface Social Justice Group, Freedom Block, Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority uh, at Garfield CLC at five thirty tonight. Please come. I need you to hear these people. I'm telling you, we have so much control. We can do so much in local politics. So much. Learn about these people. They're fun. They're fun. They're fun. All right? Uh, just vote for one of the black candidates, all right? Just, just do that for me, will you? Um. We've never had a woman voter or a woman. Um, we've never had a, a, a woman mayor. We've never had a black mayor. A woman mayoral mayor would be incredible, would be 
So incredible. So, 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 so incredible. Please, Lord, let Tara Mosley win. It would restore my faith in all of you. I don't know. My faith in humanity has always been restored. I believe in humanity. I love humanity. You guys are what actually keeps me going. You're incredible. Uh, Marco Somerville could be great. The thing I like about Marco Somerville is his team. It's filled with young, enthusiastic people. They're like clapping and cheering and hanging and handing out his stuff. Hey, did you get, did you get Marco's thing? Did you get, you know, I, I love him. And so that, that's encouraging to me that he, um, uh, has attracted these young people. So, uh, Marco is a real down to earth guy. He's, he's like kind of salt of the earth sort of guy. I, I, you know, he's got, he's got a lot of experience and has, has a lot of power over the years, but I think he's the kind of guy that just a guy I feel, you know, and I, I really do like his business experience. I really do. So I don't know. Could I flip? Could I, by the end of this switch my, my vote to, uh, uh, Marco Somerville, probably not. Um, I believe in Tara Mosley and I really want a woman, uh, mayor want that bad, bad, bad. And I really believe in her. I'm not just doing it because she's a woman. I mean, you know, I didn't like Hillary Clinton. Um, just cause you're a woman doesn't mean you get to, to win, but I'm telling you, check her out, check her out. I really, really believe her or I really like her. All right. Uh, that, uh, okay. Wait, Tara. Oh, okay. Naomi. Okay. Naomi has some, uh, Naomi says Tara would be really disappointed if she won. She's actually crazy, overly religious to the point it comes off as a mental illness. Okay. Now I have heard this. I don't know if it was by you, Naomi, but it was definitely one other person, only one other person. If you're not the other person that said it, then, uh, that would make two people. I do not see that. I do not see her as overly religious. I, and I, you know, I follow her on social media. I've been to these debates. I've, I, I, I'm a pretty active follower of her. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I have not seen it and I'll look for it. I'll definitely look for it. Um, I just don't know. I don't know it. I don't, I haven't seen that. Um, Another person didn't like Tara because they got blocked by her on her personal Facebook. And I'm like, well, I do that. And I talk about spiritual stuff a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we all have our own reasons for doing things. And um, I, I, I feel like, um, Ah, there you go. Okay. Any comment it is religious is too much for me. So that's fair. Totally fair. Totally fair. And I will say this. Um, I am sick of, I consider myself a Christian and I'm sick of Christians. Um, my, uh, there are two people that guide me in life. When I ask like, what would so-and-so do? I ask, what would Jesus do? And, um, uh, I asked, what would John Brown do? Those are the two people that I hold a barometer up to. Naomi says, like, if you're going to post about your political platform, do not use that to speak on your personal. Rel I mean, yeah, I would say that's not cool, I guess. But I would say, you know, if you look at what I post, I post about spiritual stuff. Ah. Okay. And that I t look, my wife is too. Uh, my wife is a militant atheist. I don't know if she would say militant, but, but like, she's always got radar for me going to woo woo. And she's like, no, dude, it's just chance. It's just chance. I will never vote for someone who mentions their personal religion. Well, I guess you can't vote for me. You can't mention it. You just mentioned yours. You just mentioned your religion. And may I say atheism is a religion. There is only one correct answer. And that is agnosticism. Atheists are just as religious and maybe sometimes more so than all the other ones. You are absolutely convinced there is no higher being at work and you can't prove it. Prove it. You can't. You don't know what was before the Big Bang. 
Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's fine. But don't you want to know, like, I mean, don't you want to know with the makeup of a person? Like, if they were into Scientology, you may be like, well, wow, okay, Scientology. I mean, I mean, and may I say, maybe you are, and which is fine, maybe you don't want to vote for anybody that's a Christian or spiritual at all, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, and I could appreciate that. But, uh, and do I expect my atheism to be respected as a religion? I would hope so. And I do expect, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And do, and I do expect my atheist. Yes, of course. Look, I was a uh, atheist more than I was anything else. Um, uh, no, I do not want to know. I want to know their political standpoints. Okay. But your atheism guides you, right? Like your atheism makes you decide how, so, okay, an atheist has no moral compass outside of their own moral compass. It's like, um, it's, it's moral relativism, if you will, right? You decide what's important to your life, which I respect so much, as opposed to being sent down uh, some stone tablets by some daddy figure. Whatever. It doesn't have rape on there. It doesn't have in, uh, child uh, pedophilia. Those Ten Commandments are total shit. It's like five statements about how you need to love God. Uh, atheism is practical. The rest are... Mm, uh, nope. Atheism is delusional, too. Um, you could be right, but you can't... You cannot... Ab you absolutely cannot prove to be right. Uh, so let me say this. Like, um, I fight... Okay, I'm going to tell you my, I'm going to tell it really quick, my belief. And it's, it's, I just made it up. I made it up, but it's what drives me. Um, here, I want to get to J J Jolie's point. Just one, one, one second. Um, I, I, this is my standing position right now. I believe we are here to level up. When I look around the world and I see constant suffering, life is nothing but work and suffering. You can't, I mean, it's not nothing, but most, the majority of life is work and suffering. And you can't tell me it's not. I mean, yes, we get to take breaks. We get to relax at night. We get to take a nap. We get to sleep. But you wake up and you're back, at the, uh, back on the grind. Why? Why is life, why, what is the point of that? I mean, even from a biological standpoint, why would we do that? Why wouldn't we biologically, as the apex predator, the greatest predator on earth, make our lives completely suffering free? Just like we see suffering, we're like, nope, no suffering, no suffering. We can't. No matter how hard we try, I don't work, but I still suffer. That's totally fine. You work. You work, Naomi. I mean, to say you don't work, I'm suggesting, I'm not suggesting a nine to five kind of work. I'm saying like work just to survive, just to eat just to live in a house you work your ass off we all do we all do um i believe we're here to get better i'm now working with this idea that yes jesus was a son of god but we're all sons and daughters of god in fact now now that's not even right that's not how i believe i believe we are gods I believe we are gods, and um, we have been given an incredible gift to be on this little rock, hanging out and looking back at our true home, which is the universe. It is so beautiful to see with our eyes. I'm sorry uh, uh, if you can hear my door. That's a whole other religion. I I consider myself a Christian because I adhere to the philosophies of Jesus. I don't believe he was born a virgin birth. I don't believe that it was God's one and only begotten son. I don't believe that he was raised from the dead. Um, I don't. Uh, we... Those were all just oral stories for what, 60 years before it ever got, you, you can't tell me what, you can't recite an exact story that happened last week, let alone 60 years. Is it 60? I'm, I'm, 
without it was something like that 40 60 years before they ever before jesus died and they ever wrote down uh we were born in a christian age. of course you very possible but i'm open to anything i've been a baha'i um i've been an atheist um i was i was really checking out um it's christian but um uh mennonite um i'll try anything i try anything i'm open to it all I mean, yes, I do have to be aware that uh, there's bias because I was born Christian, yes. But I believe, and I probably need to be aware that there is bias because I'm surrounded by Christians. But look, um, this is what I believe, okay? Uh, Jesus, what you have done to the least of these. This is what I believe. Okay. Uh, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say those on the left, depart from me, you are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Uh, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I need clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They will all. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison? Did not help you. And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. That's why I'm a Christian. That's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. That's all I need. What? Okay, so... All right, so I would say that that's uh, kind of mean. What a luxury to change your religion as you learn. People have been killed for it in the past. Oh, maybe maybe it's not mean. And it happens in other countries. Of course, yeah, okay, yes. And that's because I live in the United States of America that I'm allowed to do this. Uh, it's the root of all evil. Religion, mm, the root? Uh, I don't know. Hitler was pretty shitty and he wasn't the greatest. Uh, there were, okay. How many evil dictators were atheist? Uh, okay, here you go. Um, ah, come on. Okay. So as any communist dictator but viewed as the requirement to hold an office in many communist countries, you had to be an atheist. Some people may lay claim that while these dictators were atheists, they never did anything in the name of atheism. It's worth noting that the height of religious persecution happened under Stalin and Mao, with millions slaughtered merely for being religious. That's identical to the same methodology any religious purge or program uh, used in the past. Only difference was scale second only with the Holocaust. Don't think I'm biased against socialists. I am one. Okay, so I would say that that's not... Um, that right there is suggesting that religion is not the root of all evil. I think humans are the root of all evil. Just being a human. I think we are the worst thing and the best thing. We're, we're it, you know? I find more meaningful packages in animal farm. Sure, animals are created equal and some are more equal. Hmm, I don't know if I believe that. Maybe they're more equal. And uh, now ask how many religions carry. Okay, I will. How many murders were carried out in the name of religion? Let's see. The 10 biggest atrocities. 89% uh, of the world's population believes in some sort of monotheistic policy. Okay. Uh, Christians have undoubtedly killed millions in the name of God, but the sadistic and barbaric methods which they acts were undertaken has long since given way to an array of pacific and peaceful methods. Okay, wait. Uh, jihad's not traditional terrorism. Okay, this is, uh, this is, I need like a chart. Religious violence. Wikipedia, don't fail me now. Um, all the religions have narrative symbols. Violence is a very broad, con religion is a complex modern concept. Religious violence, cultural process. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. I mean, look, yeah, there's fucking assholes in religion. But I, 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 I yeah, and I can't give you, I don't want to bore people with that, but I, I will acknowledge a hundred percent. I believe 
that it's shitty people that go to the religions. Uh, you're shitty and you you cling on to whatever you want to cling on to. Atheism, like uh, like uh, uh, socialism or, or monotheism. Um, I, I see a lot of, I have a lot of friends who are um, uh, 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 evangelicals and they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. But I firmly believe that they'd be beautiful people whether or not they were evangelicals or not. I believe good or bad people go into these organizations and then make them good or bad more so than they already were. Uh, but I don't, I just don't think it's the, I, I think it's the people. People, I'm telling you, people are the worst and best thing. We have, we have it. We have Jesus and Hitler inside of us. All of us do. Uh, yeah, right. Religion is absolutely religion is a human construct. Absolutely. Uh, well, religion is a human. Yeah. Okay. But when the Vatican looks like it does while they collect money. Oh, the Vatican. Fuck the Pope. Oh, did you see this? I've been following this. Oh, I can't show you because I'll probably be blocked. But like I've been really into Sinead O'Connor recently. And uh, when she tore up that picture of the Pope, man, she was hated. And the reason was she did it was because she was directly affected by uh, abuse by people in the Catholic church. And she was the first person to spoke, speak up about it. She ruined her career to speak up about the abuse in Catholicism. And she was right. She had, she, she led that. We, uh, you look at Sinead O'Connor, just watch her, go watch some of those old videos. And, uh, that where she was booed at, uh, in, uh, uh, grand, a uh, huge crowd. Um, Chris Christopherson, uh, look on YouTube, uh, Sinead and Chris Christopherson. It's so powerful. Um, they just destroyed this 20 something year old girl because she had the audacity to stand up for what she believes. Uh, yeah, you can take religion and shove. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Look, Fuck religion. A lot, most of these, all of these organizations are terrible. But I'm just here to tell you, the reason I go out to help homeless people, I'm inspired by all of you. You are the, you give me a lot of energy to do this work. But ultimately, um, I believe I'm here to level up. I don't know why I'm here to level up. I don't know that, but I don't care. I'm just here to get better. I have a I have a wonderful blessing, for lack of a better word, a wonderful gift. Let me call it that. I have a wonderful gift that I am on planet Earth in the an incomprehensibly large galaxy and universe that's probably just a part of endless galaxies and universes. And here I am talking with you, getting to enjoy a warm a March day. I get, well, I don't get to eat bread right now because I'm on a diet, but I will soon. And I'm so lucky. And uh, what a lovely, lovely thing. And, and, and I happen to believe there was a reason for it. It doesn't matter to me if you believe that or not, because what you do doesn't matter to me. I'm not here to change souls. I'm here to just be me. I can't change anybody. I can't change a homeless person from quitting drugs or getting out of a uh, a tent. And now I'm to the point where I'm like, why, why would you, I mean, fuck income inequality and the abuse that the system has put on poor people. Maybe you're better just to stay in your tent. Um, I'm not here to, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to change the system. I'm trying to make people more compassionate, but that's not on me either. You're going to decide to be compassionate or not compassionate, or the system's going to decide to be compassionate or not compassionate. What well, no matter what I do. Um, uh, it does matter. If I go kill 10 homeless people today, that will matter to you. A lot of things matter to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is warm. Um, kids are being murdered in schools. Yeah. I mean, yeah, these things matter. I guess maybe I'm not, but I'm not, I mean, I'm just going to keep doing what I did. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. The, 
the way we torture homeless people in America is worse than extermination. We have shunned and, and, and forgotten American citizens, human beings, in the richest country of the world, when we can open up any number of abandoned buildings to let them take refuge, but we don't. We torture them on the streets and then accuse them of living wrong. You said it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't. I mean, I, I'm sorry if I'm not explaining it right. Like, I'm saying you matter to me, and I'm influenced by my world, and things make me happy and make me sad, but I am not going to stop fighting for homeless people just because Dan Horgan says I can't have a tent in my yard. That's, I guess, what I mean. I'm not going to stop being me because somebody from the outside said I should stop being me. Uh, Ruthie says, you're being a voice for those that feel they don't have a voice. Yeah. And whether or not somebody does something with that is on them. People don't want to help homeless people. Seeing them makes them feel good about their crappy lives. Someone else's suffering makes them suffering seem less suffering. Maybe. Or maybe they look at suffering people and uh, feel bad. <laughs> You see a suffering puppy, you feel bad. You see a suffering old human on the side of the street freezing, you feel bad. I mean, maybe, Naomi, I could suggest that you're, you might be coming from an angry place. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe you are, um, against the idea of, a God or a creator or a, or, or, or hope or, or love or belief in people, even just belief in anything, because maybe you're just, that's where you are in your life right now. Have you thought about maybe the fact that you're just really hurt right now and you have every right to be hurt because life has been a shit storm for you. And I don't know if it has, I don't know anything about you, but what if you maybe, I mean, could it be like, like Darth Vader? I'm not saying you're Darth Vader, but Darth Vader, look, uh, they stole his mom. They killed his mom. And uh, then his love of his life uh, was died in childbirth. That's what happens. He had a reason for becoming so hateful. But it doesn't. And then at the very end, it looked like he got redeemed. Like he he found love in his heart that was always there. He just. Um, I'm not against love or hope. I'm against delusion. I don't believe. Okay, fine. Fine. But, you know, you said this one thing. People don't want to help homeless people. I don't believe that. To say that universally is not true at all. That's, that's undeniably false. Some people don't want to help homeless people. Um, seeing them makes them feel good about their crappy lives. Some people feel that way. Someone else's suffering makes them, my suffering seem less suffering. Some, sometimes. Some people, yes, but not all people. That's factually false. Not all people. That starts where, where I began. Not all people do anything. I don't work. I vacation five times a year. I have a great life compared to a lot of people. That doesn't change the facts. When I look around, I see suffering everywhere that I can't ease. Okay. Yeah. Well, have you ever thought about trying? Maybe you do try. You sound like you have a blessed life. You are very lucky. You're very, you have a gifted life, a gift. Your life sounds beautiful, very beautiful. And you might be a very happy, open person. Maybe I'm just seeing one particular part of you right now, which is fine. And maybe you're just kind of angry right today. I'm angry today. But, but to say that people don't care is not universally true. And in fact, I would say, um, more people care than people that don't care. I bet you care. I know you care. I can tell. I know you do. I can tell. You're, I think maybe, you're, and you're right to look around and you see a shitty world and you're like, wow, this place fucking sucks. I mean, yeah, you can make that perspective. Sure you can. But it's not the only perspective. Have you seen puppies? Have you tried the bread? Have you gone and gotten pizza recently? Have you been to uh, a national park? How many churches send empty? Just yeah, right. They all do. I mean, yeah. Fuck a church. I I I come after the church a lot. 
churches are condescending um well condescend now maybe they're uh they're high and mighty bullshit artists they just they they cater to the parishioners that pay them money and the parishioners that pay them money don't want poor people around and so they keep the poor people at bay i mean look um what about empty heated garages they sit empty <laughs> It will never be okay with me when a church sits empty in the evening while people sleep. Yeah, I agree. Well, then take that on as a cause. If you want, it's a valid, you're right. I hate that. But I will say this. I will say this with 100% certainty that because I've lived through it. The fire department will not let you shelter homeless people in a church. Uh, they'll close down the whole church. They'll pull the electric. Um. Oh, I've seen a puppy today. I woke up next to the most beautiful puppy in the world. See, that's all you need. That's it. How can you believe that the world is bad when you have a puppy? My God. Puppies. Um, yeah, you're right. Garages do not stand one to three days a week. Preach about helping. Yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. But I'm here to tell you. You cannot shelter people in a church. The fire department will shut you down because you do not have zoning and the fire and, and you have to get zoning to approved for sleeping over. You have to uh, be zoned. You have to get a fire permit. You, you, you have to meet all of these things. So it's not really even the church's fault. I'm not saying they would if they could, but I'm telling you the fire department would shut them down. They shut me down because of that. Jane says many people help. They just don't do it. Directly, they give to facility other help. Yeah, to facilitate others to help. Few of us could do what they do for their support. By the way, Sage, we have a church who's going to build a 180 workforce apartment. Wow. And may I say, this is mindful. This is mindful that not all churches are bad. You can, you, a lot of it is perception. You choose to see what you want to see. You're right. There are bad churches and maybe most churches are bad. Maybe. Naomi says, my bubble of a world is great. It's comfortable and warm and fuzzy. It's when I leave that bubble that it's awful. Well, no. You go on vacation five times a year. Or maybe you include that as your bubble. <laughs> Why don't you pick a part outside your bubble? Maybe you do. I don't know you. Why don't you pick something to work on? Anything. Pick up some trash or... Um, take care of an old person, knock on the door of an old person, see how they are, have a conversation with an old person. I mean, just try, maybe this is where you're at in your life. And again, I don't know you. I don't know what your life is like. I'm still in my bubble when I, yeah, when you're on vacation for sure, for sure. So, I mean, maybe this is where you're at, Naomi. I mean, maybe you're, maybe you just need to, um, push it out a little bit. Uh, yeah, Jean, Jean, yeah, uh, she says, we don't have a homeless shelter for men here in Medina. Local churches host Operation Homes for them. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I know for a fact that a police from Medina shuttle homeless people to the Haven of Rest here in Akron. I've seen it happen. Josie says, we need to figure out how to house the homeless people because they need to get off the street. I need some, some more place warm to sleep at night. Yeah, it's wrong all the way around that people are living on the street. It's bad for them. It's bad for society. It breeds disease. It breeds illness. It, 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 it's, it's inconscionable consciously. Uh, it, it makes your city, your, your, your community look worse. They all, all arrows point to let's get these people off the street. But yet we won't. We won't. Uh, the liberals want housing first. Everybody needs a one-bedroom apartment. I don't believe that. Um, I believe we need tiny houses. I believe we need campgrounds. I need, we believe we need to innovate. Everybody needs a place to live somewhere and it doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to happen. Now you can work on perfect later on. We don't have enough money and land and time to build free houses for everyone that needs them. We don't California is spending billions and billions of dollars. Uh, housing homeless people, and they have not changed the homeless number. 
when I get where I need to be going, I'm going to find a house or something, a building. I'm going to try to help you. Oh, that's, that's sweet, Josie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, houses are complicated. I have a house. It's very difficult, very challenging. Uh, Naomi says, I'll be driving in my little bubble, happy and warm in my car. Then I see someone walking out, out if a park carry everything they own in a blanket. It makes me mad. Okay, not mad at them. Mad at the world that won't let them live in a way they want to. Okay, fine. But here you go, Naomi. You can't change that. You can try to change that, but being mad about it doesn't change anything. Maybe you could like pull up on that guy and be like, hey, man, here's 20 bucks. I'm rich. You want to make a guy's day? Hand him 20 bucks and let him do whatever he wants with it. Get his dick sucked. <laughs> Buy some <laughs> meth. Shoot some fetty. Don't just don't just hand it over. You'll make his life. Be like, this is the greatest day I've had all year. I mean, what can you do to make him feel better? Poverty is not going away, people. I don't see that. I don't see a world where there's no poverty. We have to stop looking at the government to solve our problems. It's time for us to stand up and solve the problems ourselves. Okay? We can do what we can do. Why don't you get that guy a tent? Why don't you ask him what he wants? That's the number one thing. What do you want? You need anything, man? He'll probably be like, no, I'm fine. And just keep going. Maybe you could befriend him. You can't have wealth without poverty. I think that's right. Capitalism defines it. I'm a liberal and definitely don't believe in housing first. Oh, good. Ooh, let's see. Let's watch this. Oh, this is an hour. I'm not going to watch this now. I will later, though. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. Um, <laughs> baloney. Um, yeah, I, I do believe, Naomi. I do believe that uh, um, capitalism creates a system where we have to have poverty. I really do. I really, really do. Um, I've got to wrap up, guys, but this has been amazing. Um, Naomi, you're, you're amazing. And thank you for being here. And um, you have a right to be mad at the churches and the, and the government and the institutions. And I mean, let's talk about uh, global warming or, or, or nuclear weapons and all the things that you have a right. You have every right to be scared and angry about. Every, every right. But maybe you have to find some way to make yourself feel better, to find some peace in your mind. When you walk out of, if you walk out of your bubble and you just become filled with anger, you probably have some anger issues. Maybe you talk to your therapist about, I'm just saying, but you also want to find some love. Okay. You got to find the love. You got to be able to go outside your bubble. Look, when I go and hang out with my homeless friends, I have a wonderful time. We laugh, we, we eat donuts, we, we smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't do any of this right now because I'm on a diet, but I, don't, I haven't smoked cigarettes in 19 years. I roll them cigarettes. I get them dumpster donuts from uh, 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 Krispy Kreme. Uh, we, we, smoke, we drink coffee. And we work and we have a, just a wonderful time. Just being together is a wonderful time. And honestly, their freedom is sometimes when the weather's nice, not too hot, not too cold. You look at a homeless person and they're pretty freaking relaxed, man. I'm mostly mad I brought humans into this world. Okay. I, oh, this is so beautiful. I think about that sometimes, but it's not over until it's over, Naomi. I'm very hopeful. Honestly, I'm a little hopeful for AI. I believe uh, we are living in an area. Somebody just said, uh, somebody like a high, high executive in Google said that they believe AI is going to be more important than electricity and the advent of fire. Okay. Um, things are going to change. And 
and maybe AI will just eliminate us. They also, they did a survey of people working in AI and they said that there's a 10% chance that AI will just exterminate us, which is fine. But what a gift. You know what, Naomi? Look, it sounds like you're wealthy. Uh, just by which you're, you're, you're comfortable. Let me say that you're comfortable. What a blessing. I'm sorry. You don't like that word. What a gift it is to bring some humans into your loving bubble. And what if you can treat, you can show them love and acceptance. I mean, look at the story of Siddhartha. Have you read Siddhartha recently? The Buddha grew up in a wealthy, his, he was a prince or something. And he went out on a, on a carriage in his wealthy carriage and saw all the poverty and decided he was going to do something about it. And now we have all been given a great gift of, of Buddhism and the Buddha. What a gift. What a gift we have you, Naomi, that you're here, you care. You are a god with a world full of gods. And you have been given this wonderful empowerment of, 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 of um, physical comforts. Detach with love. Yes. Learn some Buddhism. Detachment. Have you? I mean, Buddhism is not a religion. I mean, it's a it's a it's a philosophy. Study detachment. Um maybe you need to do that. And detachment is not saying in any stretch of the imagination that you uh are giving up. It's saying that you are letting go of the suffering so that you can work in a in in, in a realm that is of peace and love not of hate and anger. Naomi, uh, you're lovely. You're a wonderful, wonderful human. And I bet your kids are wonderful and lovely. Make a little, so here, look, this is it. And I got to go. I don't know if I'm making any good or bad in the world. I don't know. I know homeless addicts who have produced the most beautiful children because they saw their parents and they were realized that they wanted better for themselves. And they're still compassionate. They still love their parents. I have a, I have a daughter who calls me once a year to make sure her dad is still alive because she loves her dad. And I'm like, my God, you're a beautiful, beautiful soul. She's not angry. Uh, anger does fuel me too, but Jane, you're right. You're right. But you want, you got to, at a point, you want to, you don't want to have a heart attack. It's, you then you can't work. You got to, I, I believe you have to, there's a season for everything. I do believe that anger, love, peace. I do believe that. Um, so you don't, I don't know if I'm doing good or bad. Maybe I'm making the things worse. It's not on me to say if I'm making good or bad in the world. But what I do know is I'm sending out waves. I, I feel confident that when I post something about homeless people, I'm sending out a wave. When I do something that I think is good, I'm sending out a wave. And maybe that wave helps somebody else to think about something good they could do. Maybe. Maybe it makes them just hate me more. Maybe. Maybe they look at me and they're like, that guy is a moron. Uh, <laughs> too late. Already had an aha. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Just maybe, maybe, maybe look into Buddhism, uh, Naomi. It's not not spiritual. It's just a philosophy. It's a mental practice. Um, and uh, maybe you think about showing your 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 kids about what a gift they've been given, and how you can make the world a little bit better, because you only have to make someone else's life a little better once and you've you're you're a net positive. If you aren't making things worse, if you're trying to work on making things worse like just being a zero of negativity or you know you're being neutral, good or bad, neutral, you're wonderful. And then every time you uh you go just a blip above that, like you give that homeless guy a $20 bill and expect nothing out of it, just let practice giving with no uh uh judgment no wondering, like real giving is such a cool practice. Hand a $20 bill and let it go. Let it go. 
Just think about love and happiness. Don't think about where that $20 bill is going to go. Might go someplace that you approve of, might go someplace you don't approve of. I would imagine as an atheist, you don't really care what a person does with money. I don't, I mean, if they want to, they want to hire a, a, a sex worker or get high, I would think as an atheist, you'd be totally cool with that. I mean, there is no moral absolutes. I mean, maybe that's exactly what that person needed, or maybe they'll use it to pay off their phone bill. Um, Jeannie says, you are talking about others. The less fortunate cannot say, thank you, Jeannie. I just love man, love yourself, love your neighbor, love people. Don't just love man, love. Okay. I love you. You're amazing. Thank you for all being here. I got to go. And, uh, if it's sunny where you live, where it is like me, uh, Jane says, I got lectured this morning about being nice when all I was doing was stating the suffering of others. Yeah. You can't go wrong being nice, man. Just, you know what? It's just so hard being a human. And that comes back to why I think we're here personally, not that I'm trying to t- convince you. I'm just, this is what I believe, but I'm trying to get better. I think the suffering helps me get better. Um, yeah, man, if you can be nice to a person, you know everybody's suffering, right? It all it sucks for all of us here. <laughs> it sucks. We come down with cancer. Uh, that Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, got duct taped in her in her in her uh, uh, Parisian hotel in the in the tub and stole all of her jewels. I mean, you can imagine the trauma of that. It sucks. It sucks around here. So good God, just be nice. Smile. Say hi to somebody, you know, <laughs> you'll probably make their whole day. Uh, Josie says, I, you are doing a wonderful job about homeless because you know what, that I was there and, and I know that we can do this and help them out. Yeah, just help them out, Josie. You're lovely. You're all lovely. You're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. All right, I got to go. I'll see you later.